Hello friends, welcome to Abhyas Training Institute. So in today's video, we will see how we can generate a sinusoidal signal. Then we will add some noise to that sinusoidal sing signal. We will add a random noise. Okay. Then we will plot that. And then what we will try to do finally, we will uh, design a filter using Butterworth. Okay. So we will design a digital filter, uh, normally IIR filter. Then we will apply that filter to that noisy signal that we have generated. Okay. So let's see how that stuff works. So normally what we will try to do, we will create a noisy signal. Then we will remove that noise and we will see how that filter works in Mat MATLAB. Okay. So we will use that. We will do this with Butterworth filter, not with others. We have a lot of filters in our list and we will discuss one by one and we will use filter fil command to apply that filter. Okay. So let's see how that works. So first uh, simple things, what I have done, I have line space, then I have generated a time from minus two to two and uh, I have taken a 351 point. We can take any point uh, like 400 or anything. That is the normal thing that we know. Okay. Then what we have done, we have taken a norm rand command so what that command do so as i have told you earlier as well we don't have to mug up anything just we will copy it and paste it there why we will not mug up anything because there are lot of things that we have to know so if we want to generate a random number then we will use it and in that random number there is a three things we should know mu sigma and size so we know mu means mu, uh, mean of that signal means do we, means whatever the mean uh, we will be getting uh, for those random numbers like uh, 0, 1, whatever we want. Then we have a standard deviation sigma and last one is a size means uh, what should be the size of that uh, signal that we are generating. So side we should define why we should define the size because we will be applying that signal to the uh, time series signal that we have generated in line 3. So the size of the normalized random number that should be the same as the t. Okay. So that's why we have to take a size as well. Okay. So mean we have taken a 0. Why we have taken a 0 means mean because we are going to use a sinusoidal signal. Okay. So we will use that mean. Otherwise you can determine that mean of that signal that you are having. Then you can apply there. Then you can generate a random number. Then we have a standard deviation of 1 and size of the t. So this is how we can how we are going to generate a noise then we have to generate a sign signal okay so to generate a sinusoidal signal that is the basic stuff that we have done a lot of time if you want to see how we can generate a sinusoidal so i have given a link in description and there as well so you can watch that video okay so here we have generated a sinusoidal signal that is a combination of sine and cos okay normally and we have some frequency deviation uh, difference and the uh, amplitude difference as well so if you want to see that signal, how it will look, I will do that. Then what we have done, we have created one noisy signal. So to create a noisy signal, what we will do, we will add X with noise. So that will create our noise signal. So I will execute this part for you. Let me just right click there and evaluate the section. Then we will have a plot, simply plot. Uh, it should be somewhere. Okay, so let's see. There that blue line. Blue line is our uh, original signal, means sinusoidal signal that we have uh, generated using sine and cos with some frequency change and all. Then this is the noise added to the signal. You can see that noise is simply uh, uh, moving with that signal. Means we have added the noise to that signal. Now our what is our aim? We have to remove this noise and we have to generate the original signal means if you have some sensor data that will be the noisy data then you have to smooth that signal right this is not a curve fitting not a anything we are what we are just trying to do we are uh, trying to smooth the signal that we have recorded from any sensor uh, for saying okay so let's go uh, how we can design a filter to design a filter what we need to do we have to first define a method means uh, which method you want to use to generate the filter coefficients i think you all know about the filter coefficient if you don't know you can prepare any book of the signal processing and then you can read all that stuff for now what we are going to do we will use butterworth filter to um, design a filter okay and there are a few arguments that we have to pass in butterworth filter like uh, order of the filter uh, similar thing if you don't know the order first you have to read the signal processing then you program it on MATLAB okay so because we are I'm not going to teach you the single processing I'm just 
trying to explain how we can design that filter uh, in MATLAB. Okay, so let me just go to the help and we will just see that how that butter byte filter design works. So then butter byte filter first argument is our order of the signal. Second one is a normalized cutoff frequency WN. And we are going to design what we are going to design. We are going to design a digital filter. So WN should be always from zero to one. Okay, not uh, less than zero, not greater than one. That value should be uh, somewhere zero to one. Okay. Then we have a filter type. Now, like if you want to design a low pass, high pass, band pass, anything. So by default, that butter uh, command will take a, a low pass filter. Okay. And if we are using a band pass filter, then we have to pass two argument for WN, like you have to use a square bracket, then a lower cutoff frequency and higher cutoff frequency. Then you have to mention a filter type as well. Okay. So this is how we can get a filter copy chain B and A. Uh, one should be a denominator, one should be a numerator. Okay. And what will be that? A will be our uh, numerator and B will be a denominator. Okay. Like this. So let's use that command and I'm generating a order 5 filter and if you know like how I do know that filter order. No, I don't know. I'm just using any random number. I have not done like much analysis. So that's why we are using a MATLAB. We can apply different kind of filter and we see the output like if it is matching our original signal or not. Okay. Then I have taken a cutoff frequency of 0 0.1. Okay, normalized frequency that is related to the next frequency as well. Uh, okay, let me just explain this for you. There should be. Okay, here you can read all, uh, all about it. If we are using it for analog filter, that will be a our cutoff frequency, not in the next rate or anything. So the unit is uh, radian per sample. Okay, so. Now we are, we have done, we have created a, a filter. Okay. The filter copy send. If you want to see those filter copy send, let me just run this code and you can see we got the filter copy send. Okay. And those are the numerator and denominator. And you can write a transfer function directly from this. And if you want, uh, want to calculate a transfer function of any filter, then we can do it. And then what we have done, we have to uh, suppose that is our first stage that we have completed. We have designed now what we have to do, we have to apply that apply filter to uh, signal. Okay. So there are two methods. First method is we can apply fil uh, filter to any signal using a filter or we can use filter filter command. The basic difference between those two is means filter command. Uh, we are applying filter once to the signal and this one in filter field, it will apply two times to that signal, like X signal. Uh, this should be Xn, I guess, because Xn is our uh, signal. Okay. So to the Xn, what we are doing, we are applying a filter coefficient, which one B and A that we have calculated from Butterworth. Then we are applying this. Okay. And then we can open, uh, we can plot it. Okay. Then let me just plot it for you. So we have applied filter using a filter command. And here you can see if we are getting any difference or not, you can see, but we are getting a just similar kind of stuff. And the another method to apply a filter is filter filter. So that is the basic difference. This will apply filter to a once, this will apply filter to a twice. So phase difference will be zero in filter filter. But with this, we will get a some phase difference because uh, that filter will create a phase difference because we are using the IIR filter. Okay, then if you want, we can plot this guy as well and we can run evaluate the section. Now you can see all those. Um, so you can see the phase difference as well. Okay, so this is the original signal. This is the using a filter command that red one. Then we have that some ELA signal that is using a filter. So there is a no phase difference. You can say phases same in those, but there is a phase difference between this. Okay, so yeah, so this is the basic step and we can uh, smooth our signal. Ah, there is one more thing, like if we want to change the order, then we can check what is happening. Let me just put five. Okay, now the order of filter will be five and I can run this. So you can see now our signal is more smooth. So we can increase the order. But here you are seeing that has crossed the original value from the 
uh, previous one. So you can compare. So um, whenever we are going to increase the order, then the stability will uh, decrease as well. So, but we are not much concerned about the stability and reliability of the filter because we are using a software. Not we are not going to build that filter on hardware. So yeah, no issue. So it's on your application, or you can just try some hidden. So you here you can see there is a lot of these different and it's not looking like our original signal. So we have to remove that order of the filter. I will use second order. Okay. And you can also change that cutoff frequency and then pick the, the signal will look like our original signal. So I guess this is it for this video. If you have liked this video and somehow we are able to help you, you can hit the subscribe button and you can share with a friend and if you have any doubt please do mention in the comment section and we will try to give you the answer or you can mail us as well so thank you friends thank you for watching this video and we will come with more videos very soon